How's it going everyone? College Lefty and in this video I'm going to be trying out the 97 overall future star Michael Kopech. He is an event reward and I should have enough stubs to buy him here but I also have the, this 90 plus live series diamond and we get Garrett Cole and Jacob deGrom in this pack so that is definitely solid. I'll go ahead and select Jacob deGrom the best card you can get out of that pack even though I'm pretty late opening up the 90 overall or the 90 level prestige diamond pack. I'll go ahead and pick up this card because there's no way I get to 48 wins in this current event or even in the next wave of events that's coming out. I believe that's going to include future stars and rookies and prospects, finest, guys like that. So I'm pretty excited to play a few games of that one, but I wanted to hop into some ranked seasons with this 97 overall Kopech and the rest of my team. So uh, I don't know how good this card's actually going to be because he does have lower control on his slider, changeup, curveball, and two-seam, really. I mean, all four of those pitches have lower control attributes. Um, his fastball, though, does have, you know, 90-plus control and the outlier quirk. So he'll be throwing it 102 miles an hour. So we'll have to keep a few of those things in mind. Luckily, we are able to get some run support early in the first inning of this game. One down, Mickey Mantle hits a two-run shot after Juan Soto gets on base with a seeing-eye single. Now we have Corey Seager up, and honestly, my timing was pretty on point in this game so far. There we get uh, just on the early side of good on a curveball low and inside off the plate, and we smack it for a double. Now we have Manny Machado up, and this one just got on me. The sinker, 95-plus from Felix Hernandez. I think he gets it up there to 97 as well. I don't think this was the prestige version. Uh, I didn't quite see that in his loading screen or in his lineup there. Um, anyway, we're starting off the game with the fastball from Kopech, trying to get the confidence up on a few of these individual pitches, simply because if I don't, I'm going to be struggling. Here we're going with the two seam, and he absolutely blasts that one. That one was not exactly where I wanted it, did not move inside enough. And that's going to be uh, the opposite of what I wanted to do, right? We get the confidence down on that pitch, and that's unfortunate. But we are going to have to use the fastball uh, a lot in this one because he does have the outlier quirk, and I think we're playing on all-star difficulty. I recently made it into the division series, but I think this guy's still in the wild card, so uh, the difficulty will be defaulted to all-star because of that, and that makes Kopech a little less effective, but... I also just noticed that he, he's tough to locate with, and I'm already not the best pitcher in this game. Luckily, we're getting a, a fastball in on the hands there. We get out of the first inning, only gave up one run, but that's kind of what I was expecting, right? To be able to um, pitch all right with him, uh, just hopefully we minimize and we don't get too wild with that card. I don't think he will be that good, though, just off of my first inning. But here we get a two-out triple with Willie Mays. That was a solid pitch to hit. Uh, really a really good pitch in general corner of the zone we had to wait back on it smack it into the gap 94 speed and that's manufacturing a run right there I mean we got Juan Soto coming up next and that's not the guy you want to face with the guy on third or even second base uh, really you don't want to face Juan Soto at all but he extends the inning for Mickey Mantle and Mickey Mantle hits another two run shot his second home run of the ball game already and we're only in the second inning so we do need to try and get some confidence back on this two seam fastball so i'm starting it off we just scored a couple runs in the last one and uh luckily he get we get him to chase he he goes the other way with that but off the end of the bat hits it right to mickey mano now we're facing yasmani grandal once again going with the two seam missed the location completely but we do get the strike three uh swinging there on that two seamer inside i don't think it broke at all because I missed with the feedback. But look at this hit from Manny Machado. To change up low and inside. Perfect placement on that change up from Felix Hernandez there. And I was able to pull it off the wall. Ended up scoring that last run. I did uh, just kind of manufacture, hit another ground ball or sack fly. And uh, the clip kind of glitched out. So I figured I would not include it. But it is 6-1. to one, And we're facing Jackie Robinson once again. Already one home run in this game. And... I missed location on that changeup. It was still good feedback with the meter, but I missed the hoop. And with like 50-something control on that changeup, that is just not what you're looking for. Uh, same type of thing here. We're going with the curveball. Curveball might be the worst pitch in MLB The Show 20 in general just because of uh, the way it comes into the zone. You can hit it early. You can go the other way with it. You can hit it below the zone. Here we get him to chase it. 
but it's still not an effective pitch. If I don't throw that in the perfect spot, then it's probably going to be smoked every time. Anyway, uh, six to three ball game, top of the fifth inning, and we we're able to pull the baseball uh, fairly well. Go the other way with some pitches on the outer half and pull the baseball inside on the hands, sometimes even off the plate. But that is going to do it for Michael Kopech because I had this situation here. We don't really capitalize, only uh, hit a chopper to second base. We score one run. Mickey Mantle hits another home run, but uh, I did have to pinch hit for him. So we won't focus on pitching as much because we are going to try and uh, extend this lead here. Eight to three. We have Mickey Mantle going deep. Babe Ruth's coming up next. He's one for three. And there he's sending out a no doubter. Back to back shots on back to back pitches. The 94 sinker up and away. I was just really trying to react to those fastballs because he wasn't really throwing as much off speed. I mean, here he's going with another one up in the zone. Perfect, perfect. Line drive, ground ball uh, through the hole there, and that's going to be a double there. 47 speed, kind of risking it, but with two outs, I'm trying to get in scoring position for Manny Machado, activate his clutch attribute, as well as uh, just really trying to extend this lead. Here, I thought this one was gone. I mean, early on it for sure. Low and away pitch, maybe off the end of the bat. But Manny Machado with that dead red quirk, I thought for sure that was crushed into the gap there. But uh, we do have Fernando Tatis starting us off here in the top of the seventh. He left in Raleigh Fingers, which is a little bit surprising. But maybe with the, the lead that I already had, he wasn't trying to use another pitcher. That would make sense to me. Uh, here, Jack Robinson falls down in left field. And we're able to score from first with Tatis. Another uh, RBI from a pinch hitter batting in that nine spot that is definitely what i'm looking for here we get a perfect perfect hit so the one before with mike trout was kind of interesting in the way i was late on it still pulled the ball there was a perfect perfect and it's a line out you know what i mean right to him in right field uh mickey Mantle though is going for his fourth home run almost had it there off the top of the right field wall that's going to be a double to bring up babe ruth and we're just looking to continue on with this inning here i mean 11 to 3 we only need a couple more runs for a potential mercy rule, we'll have to still pitch in the bottom of the seventh. But now we just need one one solid hit into the gap right here. We have Jimmy Fox up, and that's exactly what happens. He brings in Trevor Hoffman. We smash that one into the gap. We're not going to be able to score with 60 speed. But at least we have a guy in scoring position now for Corey Seager. A 3 and one count. He goes with the curveball. Sat on that one perfectly. Hit it with the perfect perfect. And that's going to be a three-run shot to give us the mercy rule. And a little bit of a cushion there, right? We're up by 12. So now if he, he scores two runs, we still have that mercy rule in effect. And now we have still two outs in this inning. I mean, scored a bunch of runs here with two down. Kind of got a little bit of a rally going. We did have the perfect, perfect line out with Juan Soto. And then we also had a pop-up. I jammed myself with Willie Mays. Those are our two outs in this inning. And they're actually back-to-back -back outs. Everybody else has gotten on the board. Their Tatis is sending one deep. And Mike Trout came up to the plate and lined out to center field to end that last inning. So 17-3. We do have to pitch this last inning here. I decided to bring in Araldus Chapman because uh, he does throw really hard and his off speed is very effective. I felt like it would throw this guy off enough to get these last three outs. And regardless of the lead, you know, I'm still trying to uh, continue to score more runs. If he does score you know, five runs here and we're still playing. Uh, no lead is ever safe, especially on all-star difficulty. I, I mean, this guy could score 10 runs in one inning, uh, just like I kind of did in that last one. But uh, he looks like he's just giving up here, squares around a bunt, and that is going to do it for that one. I think we scored eight runs there in that last inning, but we scored in every inning except for one in that last game. So definitely solid. I decided to hop into an event game just to kind of get some more gameplay for you all and we're going up against Steven Wright this opponent has Steven as his starting pitcher and I understand you know if he didn't have a lot of finest cards but uh, he does he does have a lot of finest cards he still started this knuckleball pitcher Mike Trout is not having it he goes deep first pitch of the ball game and I'm definitely gonna replay this one you're gonna watch that one back um, starting a knuckleball we're gonna watch it fly over the fence here and uh, Hopefully win this game because this opponent decided to use Stephen Wright. I'm going to try and score as many runs as possible. Um, but this home run was absolutely crushed 
with Mike Trout, 435 feet, a no doubter. And uh, I didn't end up scoring that many runs in this game. He took him out fairly early. Uh, I went with the curveball of my own down to the last out. Probably the worst idea I could have done there. He hits a home run to tie it up. And now he's going to watch that one. Absolutely. Watch the replay. Look at that. No doubter from Joe Morgan. Rest in peace, my man. I think uh, uh, he really changed the game for, at second base. Here's Griffey in the top of the fourth. And he's going deep. So you already know we're going to watch this replay as well. But uh, honestly, I was thinking to myself, you, it doesn't really matter how many runs this guy scores. I'm going to try and lock in in the bottom of the fourth inning and walk the game off regardless. But that's also a nice no-doubter from Griffey. I don't mind watching Griffey's no-doubter at all. Uh, here we go. Bottom of the fourth inning. Manny Machado's leading it off. He's ripping a base hit up the middle. So now we just need one swing of the bat and we win the game. I decided to go with Mickey Mantle off the bench. Just really trying hard uh, to win this game because this opponent started Steven Wright. Here I'm going to mess up on the bases. Not for sure I could get to third base there. Uh, but Machado does get back to second. Now we have Cody Bellinger up. And uh, he's going with the fastball down the middle. Clip glitches out. But we do hit it out for a home run. It wasn't a no doubter. But it was a three run walk off home run. And honestly overall uh, I don't think Michael Kopech is that good. I'm going to probably go ahead and sell him, but it was still nice to try him out for a game. I probably lost about 30K stubs in doing so, but definitely worth it. Until next time, everyone, peace out.